Posterior corneal astigmatism has become big news all of a sudden. For years, uh, we looked at patients with toric lenses or limbal relaxing incisions or arcuate keratotomy and realized that if you had with the rule astigmatism, you would generally get an overcorrection and you'd have to tone things down a little bit, while with against the rule astigmatism, you would typically get undercorrections and they were sort of thought of as very hard to manage, difficult cases, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and it seemed like there were a lot of different explanations for this. Uh, the fact that if you made an a arcuate incision uh, along the steep axis at 90 degrees, the effect of gravity or the effect of the lid blink caused a greater effect, uh, while if you were making it at 180, you didn't have that impact, and so those would somehow not correct the same amount of astigmatism. Uh, so it was really kind of uh, one of those duh moments when uh, Lee Wang and Doug Koch and the group at Baylor uh, discovered that in fact there's posterior corneal astigmatism, we should have known about this all the time, about 0.7 diopter on average of against the rule astigmatism. So all of a sudden that accounts for these apparent overcorrections and undercorrections. Uh, and it really makes a big deal. So they've developed a nomogram called the, the, the Baylor nomogram. And you can go through and apply that in kind of a broad stroke fashion just using your anterior corneal topography. But obviously that's gonna be a population mean. Not everyone is gonna have that 0.7. Some will have 0.3 and some will have 1.4 because there's a range. So it's better to measure uh, posterior corneal astigmatism individually on each patient and then use a value for total corneal astigmatism in your toric calculator. Now, when they uh, published their paper, uh, I went back and reviewed a couple of hundred cases of uh, toric IOL implantation and, uh, and applied the Baylor nomogram to my own data. So I pretended that instead of implanting the T3 or the T4, I had implanted a T4 or a T5 or whatever would have made the difference uh, to uh, account for that 0.7 in the nomogram. And my uh, correction of astigmatism in that sort of hypothetical uh, study went way up. I mean, it was much more pronounced, very good. So I was convinced that they were right. Uh, and so then the next step was to decide on a technique or an instrument for measuring the posterior cornea. So Scheimflug cameras can do this. The Pentacam and the Galilei are two that will accurately measure posterior cornea. And OCT uh, with the RT view is another. Ioptics is going to introduce some exciting research that they're doing with the Cassini, uh, which is an LED topographer, uh, and they can actually get reflections from the posterior cornea as well. So this is obviously a field of, of growing interest, but I think that given the state of knowledge today, uh, it's only a matter of time before it becomes standard of care for toric IOLs to account for the posterior cornea. Uh, it'll probably be down the road a piece before uh, FDA is onto that and starts requiring some kind of measurement in toric IOL calculators uh, going forward. But I think to be truly a refractive lens or refractive cataract surgeon, ignoring the posterior cornea is going to be something you do at your own peril.